I'd like to show you how to do a join in QGIS where we usually join tabular data to existing feature data, so a polygon or a point or line data layer. And we use codes in the two tables to affect that join. Now, if you don't know what a join is, you probably want to read up on the idea of a relational database join because it's easy to make a mistake unless you understand some basic theory and I might do a video that goes over that basic theory for folks if there's enough feedback and interest. I'll try and explain as we go through here. Here I have two data layers I've downloaded from a DNR stand inventory database and we often have data that are delivered with the spatial data in one set and then tabular or metadata in another set that we need to join in. Often there are many variables collected for a layer and not everyone's listed and interested in all the listed data layers and data variables and so they'll break it up and have you join it back together. Let's look at these data. So I'll zoom in on one of the sets. This is the arrowhead data that I've downloaded and it's just a tiny subset and if I open the attribute table you can see there are various attributes including a unique ID and a type and then a bunch of information. Now the type is the information here we're going to hone in on and there are many values of the same type whatever type one is and people that work with these data have these memorized but if I want to create a map for somebody or want to add a name to that type, aspen or birch or something like that, I have to somehow get that in this table. And I could enter it, look up what one is, and create a column and manually enter all those, but that would get laborious and it would be a waste of time if I had to do that again and again. So I can look at the metadata and it lists the cover types and the names associated. So any polygon that has a six is a willow, any polygon that has a 17 is a hybrid poplar. The metadata that downloaded with the spatial data tells me that. Well, I can create a comma separated value file. We talked about those in an early video inside of most spreadsheets. This is Excel and I add a min type code. I name this in the first row and a type name, which is the text that I found. And I'm matching in the metadata. There's five for Rock Elm and 12 for Trembling Aspen. Once I've added added that CSV file, I can go ahead, oops, cancel, I can go ahead and um, add that file as I've shown before here to my table of contents in my project. And so that CSV file is saved, it's the DNR species codes. I have to tell it what kind and there's no header lines to skip and the first record has the field names as I've shown. So I add that and now if I look at it, I have that species codes data, so I'll open the attribute table and it's a min type code with the information. So if I go to my either of my data sets, I can look at them and say, look, I have the attribute table and there's this min C type. When I do the join, it'll take that min type code and match it to this min C type if I set up my join correctly. Every time there's a 12 in that min code in my other table, my list of names table, it will match it and add a column with the value that corresponds to 12 for the name. So it's going across and finding every place there's a 12 and putting those data in with me. Anytime I download any data from this DNR site, I can do that match and I don't have to retype. So let's see how that works. I go to the properties and in the properties I can go down to the join button here. And so I'll type the join and I want to add a new join. And it'll ask what's the join layer, or I'm sorry, the join table. Well, I want that DNR species code. And the join field is going to be this min type code, that code number. And then the target field is going to be this min C type. Now remember, I had a data layer selected and went to the join, so it gives me the min C type for that particular data layer, not for all of them, just for the one I clicked on. And I say OK, and I apply the join and say OK. Now when I look at that table, I should have at the end there the name. So I have the species name here listed for this table, and I can then color it or, or um, put that in my my display, anything like that, uh, and I have it joined um, 
clean as can be. So if I look at it in the table of contents then, in this attribute table, I have all the old ones plus the new one. Now, this is a temporary join. If I were to now copy this DNR SI data as is to someplace else, it wouldn't bring along that join data. If I want to make that join permanent, I need to save these data into a new file because that join is always temporary. So if I want to save this someplace, I will basically have to export the data, save features as, give it a location. Here I'm going to give it where all my other data are stored. And I'll call this joined exam and say OK. It adds that joined example, and now if I look at the attribute table, the attribute table has the joined data along with it. So I can join then to my other data layer, right? Open that attribute table. See, there's no joined stuff on the end here. I'll go back in and right click and look at the properties and go to the join and add a join and tell it what I want to join, the DNR species code, the join field in that species code is this min type code, the target is this min C type. I'll say OK, apply it, and OK. And now I have the joined data here in this data set. So you can see I have these various types joined in. Again, if I want to make that permanent, I have to right click, export, save features as, save to a location, in this case to my data, this would be joined exam2. I would give it a name that made more sense if I were using these data afterwards, and there I go. And so I have these data now saved with the joined attributes. Again, there's no reason I can't do this to a hundred other files, so I can really ease my workload if I'm regularly downloading data from a location and then modifying it. I can join in the information I need as long as those codes stay the same and the DNR doesn't change those codes like ever. Joins are useful for a lot of other things. You can save statistics you generate for a summary file and then join them to other files as long as those codes make sense. Now remember, you have to be careful in how you do the joins and you have to know that you can't join on any column to any column. There is some theory behind this joining. Basically, you have to do a one-to-one -one or one-to-many join from your source to your target variable. And I'll create another video that explains that using simple graphics.